Okay, welcome to The Sword and the Tome. This is David. In this video, I've got a doozy of a trilogy for you, and that's Chronicles of the Black Company by Glenn Cook, which is actually a three-book omnibus, all of which were copyrighted back in the mid-1980s. For those of you who haven't read the trilogy, most of my review will be spoiler-free, but after I give my general thoughts and rate the series, I'll get into some spoilers so I can talk about my favorite moments from each book. I'll try my best to sum up this series, but it's likely going to prove difficult. In my edition, the entire omnibus is only a little over 700 pages, but it's such a unique and multifaceted story that I can't imagine any brief description of the Black Company neatly capturing what it is. How about I start with genre? It's an epic fantasy set in an original medieval era world. It has plenty of sorcery, monsters, and even more bizarre supernatural elements, like deserts with coral reefs whose skies are populated with flying whales and manta rays. It's a weird, wild world. Besides being epic fantasy, I've read more than one review that insists this series is grimdark, and I think I'd agree with that. It's undeniably bleak, and the protagonists are virtually all anti-heroes, and most importantly, the conflict isn't framed as good versus evil. But I'm not a stickler for subgenres, so if you disagree with the grimdark label, that's fine with me. And just to stay with genre, this series is also military fantasy. In fact, out of the multiple genres the series can be filed under, military fantasy best captures the spirit of it in my opinion. The protagonists are all veterans and officers of the Black Company, a historied mercenary corps. And when I read it, I was more reminded of Oliver Stone's Platoon than I was of Lord of the Rings. As to what I thought the series did well, the dialogue immediately comes to mind. It's first class, in my opinion. It's real, it's distinct, it's interesting. And hopefully you'll understand me when I say this, it's immersive. You know the type of dialogue that you can almost see as much as you can hear? I think it's the single strongest element of the books. Which leads me to the characters. They're definitely a strength, but I didn't actually fall in love with any of them until the second book. You see, in the first book, the protagonists don't really have goals. They're sort of pulled through the story by distant characters and outside forces. Even in book one, the main characters are still an interesting bunch. But in book two, when they actually start caring about something other than survival, that's when they really come into their own, in my opinion. That's when I started to root for them. As for the prose, I like it. A lot, actually. But I could see why it might not be every reader's cup of tea. It's generally short and punchy, with minimal environment descriptions. And I was surprised at just how poetic it was. I read in a review where someone said Cook uses a crude poetry, and I can understand where they're coming from with that. However, I think soldier poetry better captures what's in the series. Basically, poetic prose that isn't long-winded or obscure, and is occasionally off-color. Let's see, I enjoyed the humor, and there's quite a bit of it. And thankfully, the comedy doesn't lessen the danger and intensity of the world and plot. Speaking of plot, in book one, the plot was hard to find, and I do consider that a strike against it. Again, that's when the main characters lack goals. But by book two, the plot starts to take shape, and by book three, the plot is clear as crystal, and the protagonists are put on a collision course with the antagonist, and it's simply amazing. I mean, the ending of this story is as incredible and satisfying as epic fantasy endings get. Maybe the most remarkable aspect of the series is just how unique it is. There's nothing I can compare it to. It's its own animal. If anyone knows of any fantasy series or books similar to The Black Company that came before it, please let me know in the comments section. And now for my criticisms. I've already mentioned my issue with the protagonist in book one. Outside of that, my only other complaint is that the storytelling read is disjointed at times. Though honestly, that was only true for me in book one. There were multiple spots in the first 70 or so pages of The Black Company where I got lost. And that did bother me. Eventually, everything I was confused with was made clear. 
but I still feel the first half of book one isn't very reader friendly. Okay, now let's get to the ratings. Book one, The Black Company, three and a half stars. Again, it has Cook's amazing dialogue and it introduces the world of main characters, but it also has the flaws I've already mentioned. Book two, Shadows Linger, four and a half stars. A big step up in terms of execution, and the addition of Shed as a POV character was a great choice. Book three, The White Rose, five stars. Deeper character development, more emotion, and Cook nails the climax and resolution. For what it's worth, I consider myself hard to please with story endings, yet this one exceeded my expectations. All in all, this is a special fantasy trilogy. With the way it wraps up, I wouldn't argue with someone calling it a masterpiece. What I can say without a doubt is that for me, Chronicles of the Black Company was an unforgettable read. And I loved it. Alright, it's spoiler time. So stop the video if you haven't read the series. And now for my favorite moments from each book. The Black Company, Chapter 1. Showdown with the Four Velaka. This suspenseful encounter with a werecat sets the tone for what's to come. And proved that Cook can scare me and make me laugh in the same scene. Shadows Linger, Chapter 15, Shed Kills Crage. Shed undoubtedly has to be one of the least likely character types to co-lead an epic fantasy book. He's utterly unheroic. But the scene where he murders the gangster Crage and some of his underlings, while basically still being a coward, is nothing short of glorious. The White Rose. I'm tempted to just say the climax and everything that comes after it, but in order to give you something new, I'll go with chapter 39, the entire chapter. Those scenes with Croker and the lady go so far in building their relationship, and the lady has so many wonderful character revelations, that's when I changed the entire way I viewed her. I think that covers everything. I hope you enjoyed my review of Chronicles of the Black Company. If you'd like to listen to more of my fantasy book reviews, then please subscribe to the channel.